guys and welcome to this edition of Project TJ. Today I'm dropping the car off at a diff specialist in Western Sydney to get the air lockers fitted, the diffs rebuilt and the 4.56 ring and pinions put in. At the moment I'm running the Australian version which we only got one version of TJ's here which has 3.07 ring and pinions. So it's going to be quite a jump and um, I'll get my crawl ratio back and I'll be able to use 6 gear. Uh, currently it's sitting on 100 kilometers an hour in fifth because that's where it's happy four for fifth it's very happy um, I'm sitting on 2,000 rpm if I put it into sixth and it's really only happy in sixth at the moment with a down slight downhill or dead flat and if there's any sign of an uphill uh, it starts to lug a little bit in sixth or, or your foot to the floor nearly so it's much better off in fifth or fourth. However, in sixth at 100 kilometres an hour, which is 60 mile an hour or thereabouts, um, we're sitting on around 1700 RPM. So the RPMs are really low at high waist boots. That, that's gonna change. However, let's get it all fitted and we can go over it then. Uh, I have said before, the reason I'm getting this done and not doing it myself is that I don't have the tools to do to set backlash and everything. I've never done it before and um, I'd just rather handball it for some guys that do this every day of the work because I can think of nothing worse than <laughs> wearing a ring and pinion out and blowing a diff because of my bad setup. However, this is all coming at a cost and to get all this work done, and I've run all the airlines and the airlines are coiled up um, ready to drop down onto the diff pumpkins where the outlet will come out for the air lockers. So they're doing the mechanical work and setup, and just connecting up the air, air hose to the top of the diff housing. It's costing me $1,800 to get both done. On top of that has been the cost of the air lockers. I did get a deal, it was $2,200 for front and rear air lockers with the medium sized compressor, and I, I ran through what else I got as part of that package. The ring and pinions were about $850 Australian, so it's a fairly sizable investment and it's generally at this point you think oh okay I've spent that much on it now I have to keep it however my analogy of that is my father owns a four year old VW Polo and it's a nice economical car for a guy in his 80s however he got a service done the other day and it was uh, a general service that included um, I think they did transmission fluid they did spark plugs and pollen filters and it was near a thousand dollars so I'm getting both both uh, front and rear, rear diff centers rebuilt with everything else for 1800 yet dad spent a thousand on a service so I just look at the money that I spend this on this thing as the savings that I make by doing all the maintenance and sourcing my parts as cheap as I can for this and the savings are huge you've only just got to look at that analogy but anyway today let's get over there let's drop this thing off and see what it's like when i pick it up eventually well i've picked the jeep up last night and to say that i'm happy is an understatement uh this thing is just so good now with the gearing done um i was quite originally quoted two days turnaround to get it done it is a massive job to do this you've got to you know, pull the brakes off, take the axles out, um, pull the, the old stuff out of the diff centers, fit everything new, shim it, you know, get your patterns right on your ring gear. And then there was, you know, air locker drilling through the, the diff housing and it is a massive job. It, it's taken him five days and he's, the guy stayed back last night until six, half past six finishing it off. Awesome guy, it seems to be an awesome job so far. At the moment, I've got to run these ring and pinions in, so his suggestion is um, short trips. Don't sit on the freeway for hundreds of Ks. Um, short trips for about three to 500 Ks, and after a thousand Ks, drop the oil and put new oil in. <laughs> and, and he has warned me that when I do drop the oil, there will be metal shards in it or or the like and that's mainly from the um, ARB construction when they put it together so he said don't be concerned he said he gets a lot of phone calls really happy with 
with how it's worked out. With my gearing now, first gear when I take off, it has a definite sort of, oh, you're halfway across the intersection now, you need to change. And that's not trying to rev it out or anything like that. First and reverse are very low, you can tell now. Going down a steep driveway at first is now holding the Jeep back and it's really good. So, and as you can see, I've just got off the line in first and it's new need to change now. The only issue I've got now is the speedo is way out and that's okay because we've got a speedo hurler and we can fix that up when I get home. At the moment, um, on the GPS, I'm, it's sitting at about 60 kilometres an hour. I'm sitting on about 85 on the speedo. So you can tell there's been a reasonable change in ratios, but so happy with it. <laughs> the only hassle I had last night was that I gave the guy my key and I took it off my key ring that had my fuel filler key in it. <laughs> and driving home last night, I was on empty. And it was probably a half hour drive to get back home and pulled up at a servo and it's like, I don't have a fuel filler key. So we got home on fumes. When I filled it up today, it's take, there was 400 mils of fuel left in the tank. So I've been very, very lucky. Anyway, let's get this thing home. Let's change this speedo. So I'm not having kittens driving along thinking, oh God, how fast are we going? But this, this is awesome. And anyone who thinks that they can drive around on a 32 and a half to 33 inch tire without changing gearing is just fooling themselves because this thing is back to where it should be and uh, you can just tell she's going to be good off-road so anyway let's get this thing home change the speedo and go from there 12 seconds later so we're home and the speedo healer people now have an app um, called SHV4 Calc and this does your setup calcs for you and it does everything from show you how to reset the unit to factory defaults um, I don't know the calibration value just generate some instructions or precise what we're using the estimated is just for bikes so precise we've got a reference value of 60 that's what the GPS is telling us and the indicated value on our speedo is 85 so it's 30 uh, percent nearly so we'll generate the instructions and we'll do what it says. So first up, we'll pull the speedo hurler off its, that's Velcro to the firewall. You can see the um, select and set buttons here underneath with a display. So we'll turn the car on and it'll go through what the settings are and we'll do what it tells us to do. So press both buttons on the unit until L is indicated. Press set repeatedly until we get to there. Press sell to proceed to the next step. Now we've got to press set until two is blinking. Press select. Press set until nine is blinking. Press set and press set until four is blinking and press select. And that should be it. So after setting up the speedo at home, um, I was about 5% off. I've stopped, gone through the process again. I'm roughly around 2.5% off at the moment. That's okay, I'm fairly happy with that. Although, knowing me, I will go out and play with it a little bit more and try and get it exact. What else? It's so nice not to have gear wine on the overrun with the I had worn rear uh, diff gears before or bearings and it sounded like a, a plane decelerating on the overrun and it's just so nice to have nice quiet uh, diff gears now so I've taken the vehicle on the freeway and in sixth I'm sitting now at a hundred kilometers an hour at about two and a half thousand rpm before with the 3.07 gears in sixth uh, it was about 1700 rpm 1750 rpm and in sixth now it it pulls quite nicely it you do need to change gears more often and i'm sitting at a red light at the moment you'll see that when i uh, take off in first it's sort of first second and and onwards um whereas before 
you'd take off, get around the corner and into second. Now you're changing before the corner. So you're rattling through the gears a little bit more. However, overall, the vehicle's much more happier. It's gonna be pretty awesome off-road now, uh, especially when you're towing. Like even though the, the camper is quite light, getting off the mark with a lower gear set is far nicer. And more than likely now on the open road, I won't have to change down. And I'm just gonna take off now and you'll see this. That's first. And into second. And into third. Um, and fourth. So you can see how close the gear sets now are. You're into fifth now a lot earlier. Uh, 2000 RPM, I'm sitting just over 60 in fifth. And, and when I'm getting to roughly 70 or just a bit over 70, it's sort of suggesting that I'll, I could easily carry six gear now. Whereas be, before, you'd, you'd have to be on a downhill run. That's now sixth, and we're sitting on about 65, and it's carrying six to quite, quite okay. So, I've engaged the lockers just to see if they work. The front end's loaded up to no end if you try and turn with the locker engaged, so that's a good thing. Um, apart from that, I'll just cruise around, wear the ring and pinion in this week, change the oil at a thousand k's, and we should be good. But uh, it's been a really worthwhile investment. I do say investment, although the rear diff was getting to the point it had to be uh, rebuilt anyway. So that's about it for today, guys. Um, I hope you can see that the massive changes are going from a 3.07 to a 4.56 gear set does. As I said, really chuffed. I've said it over and over again. The vehicle's so much more drivable. But anyway, hope you enjoyed that. Enjoy your day, whatever you're doing, and uh, we'll see you next time. Bye now.